first nuclear power station was not built here. Uh, this was the beginning of the end of nuclear power in Germany uh, in the late 70s. The prediction then, as now, was if we don't build these nuclear power stations, the light will go, uh, lights will go out. Uh, we're now 30 years on from this. Uh, the lights are still on. Like Jacques Miller, Joseph Pesch once worked to block nuclear expansion. Then he set his mind to building renewable alternatives. He now runs FESA, an association that helps communities to develop their own solar, small hydro, and wind projects. He enticed me to visit the Freiburg region by listing the achievements of Freiamt, a community nestled in the Black Forest. Freiamt would be my first glimpse of a 100% renewable energy region, 130% in this case. They live off farming and tourism, and so there was a debate. After the first two windmills were in place and the whole hoo-ha that you have about windmills, uh, that it will scare off the tourists, that it will uh, have a noise uh, impact and so on and so on, turned out to be totally and utterly false. So this community then looked at this and decided we want two more. So we built two more. This community on its own made a very clear decision. It is not some investor from uh, Frankfurt saying, hey, we are building uh, 10 wind uh, mills. The minimum price law is very simple. If you produce renewable energy, uh, the grid operators have to uh, buy it. All of it have to give priority to it and they have to pay you a fixed price. If he has to shut down dirty generation, uh, that's, that's okay, that is wanted. Uh, that bias towards uh, uh, renewables is in the law. This is a, a, a building of the local fire brigade that they added solar to. They put solar on the, uh, on the changing rooms of the uh, local soccer stadium. But this farm over there, he is now biogas farming. But he got together with three other farmers uh, who are bringing raw materials to him and are taking out the, the, the sludge that comes out of the biogas plant and that is then uh, uh, brought back to the fields as, as uh, fertilizer. After we started the windmill project, there was this raised awareness about the importance of uh, uh, bioenergies, about renewable energies. Many of the people whom we contacted about using their roofs said, hey, uh, said, yes, this is a great idea. Uh, we really like this, but we're doing this ourselves. Hmm. We're not giving you the roofs. If you have a wind site that you can use, that generates anything between five to 10,000 euro uh, of, of annual income without any extra effort. When the wind is really blowing, uh, what we have here is that the noise from the trees almost blots out the, the noise from the turbines. I mean, this is what the farmer says who is closest. Very quiet, you can just hear the wind, the blades. Traffic is much, much louder. Can the landscape take it? I believe it can. I like to hear them turn. And you know, with every revolution the, the blades make, uh, it produces kilowatt hours. And that's the beauty of it. You can, you can stand here and just watch kilowatt hours being produced. Got it. This ran, is Freiam for ran you. Through. <laughs> <laughs> now this wasn't ordered. <laughs> when you remove the windmill in 20 years, the landscape will be as it was before. The next generation can take a completely fresh and uninhibited decision. Uh, uh, of course, that is definitely not true for nuclear power. And it's not true for coal uh, as well. Some people are making a lot of money now out of renewables, and that's all right. Mm -hmm.